This is an example of a thin-walled, simple cup with a cracked-off rim. In Roman glass, there are two types of rims. There's the furnace-finished rim, and there's the cracked-off rim. The cup is very thin, so very little glass is gathered on the end of a small blowpipe. The glass is marvered to make the gather slightly cylindrical. Air is blown into the blowpipe for the initial bubble. If the blowpipe is then held downward slightly to elongate the gather, the tip is rubbed against the marver to make the tip slightly pointed and slightly cooled. And after a reheat, the blowpipe is held down, air is blown gently into the pipe, and gravity pulling downward on the bubble elongates it slightly and thins the glass near the blowpipe. A constriction is then begun. The glass is reheated. The thin sides require frequent reheating. The bubble is blown a little larger The neck is finished. And after another reheat, air is blown into the pipe with the blow hose. This would have been an assistant, presumably, blowing into the blow pipe. The jacks are held against the sides to establish the conical profile and the bottom is flattened. And that ends the glass blowing process. The piece is then broken free of the blowpipe, placed in the annealing oven for gradual cooling. And after the vessel is cooled, a diamond on the tip of a handle is used to scratch the glass. And in modern times, a little torch is used to heat the glass at the circumference, at the location of the scratch. And after a few seconds, the glass cracks. The edge is very sharp and has to immediately be smoothed, here with a little piece of sandstone. Often cracking off leaves a little step down and you can see that. The crack doesn't return to its starting point precisely. Another way of cracking off, more likely for the ancient workers, was to use a conical tool to deliver the heat and, at the same time, create the scratches. The excess glass is, of course, recycled.